I'm Melissa Shannon, founder of Digital Scrapbooking HQ.com. Today is a release day for Photoshop Elements 2019, and for us digital scrapbookers, it's always exciting to see what improvements and new features are made in each version. Stay with me to find out more. Before we get into all the fun new features and the improvements that Adobe has made, let's check out the installation. You may not think this is a big deal, but it's a super big deal. How annoying is it to have to try and sit there and download multiple gigs of files before you can even run the program? With the new lightweight installer, the installation is so much quicker and a lot prettier than ever before. Everything is so much faster, it's amazing. The next brand new thing you'll see is the new welcome screen. With this new welcome screen, Photoshop Elements detects which version you last used and it shows you these cool little thumbnails about the new features that have been added since your last version, plus some older features that you may not have used. As usual, we have the buttons to launch the organizer, photo editor, and video editor. You need to purchase the combined Photoshop Elements Premier Elements to get the video editor, but with just Photoshop Elements, you can still make video slideshows just a little bit more basic than with Premiere Elements. Over here, we see our recent files that we've used, and another great new feature is auto creations. Photoshop Elements uses its very smart machine learning. Photoshop Elements uses its smarts to work out which photos go together and to create cute little collages and creations once you've got your photos in Organizer. Once you have got Organizer installed and up and running, they'll, you'll be able to see some auto creations. And I really love how in this one it's detected cricket. Cricket <laughs> is a sport that we love down here, here in Australia, but um, I'm very impressed by that smart recognition. So let's view all the auto creations. <laughs> They've created a slideshow from me meeting Amy Tan. And all of these auto creations were made without any input from me. Photoshop Elements will leave them there for a couple of weeks. Um, but eventually, if you don't save them, they'll be replaced by new creations. So if you like them, open them and save them for future use. Slideshows open in the organizer and collages open in the editor. With these collages, you can go ahead and move, resize your photos as you'd like. And then you can always change to a different put, um, collage style if you'd like. And if it uses any backgrounds, that'll just be automatically downloaded. I love that it has these built-in sizes for Facebook covers and Instagram too. So it makes sharing pretty fun and easy. Let's jump over to the organizer so I can show you some of the brand new features in Photoshop Elements 2019. When you first open Photoshop Elements Organizer, you'll be prompted to convert your catalogues from previous versions. And if you're like me and you have a couple, you can always go back and convert the other ones by going to File, Manage Catalogues, and then Convert, and click Convert. It'll hide the ones you've already converted. It renames the old catalogue and now your new catalogue is ready for you to open and use in Photoshop Elements Organizer. In Photoshop Elements Organizer, the main improvements are to the speed and performance. You'll love how fast it is to, pr 
to scroll and search in Photoshop Elements 2019. Now let's check out one of the improved features in the Create button in Photoshop Elements. In Photoshop Elements Editor, you can create slideshows, photo collages, photo prints, books and more. So let's create a photo collage. This feature has been completely reworked in the new edition of Photoshop Elements 2019. By default, it will use all of the photos that you've got open when you start the, the creation. You can always open or add them from your computer or the organizer if you missed a photo. There's a variety of different layouts you can use. These are landscape 6x4 photos and then portrait 4x6 photos. You can also create something that will fit perfectly on a Facebook cover or a square Instagram post. I really like this layout but I want to move my photos around a little bit. So how do we do that? Double clicking on the photo and then selecting to get a new photo or you can simply drag and drop your photos in from the photo bin. When your mouse gets that little cross mark you're ready to drop. Then I can resize this photo and drag it around. You can see that the photo is clipped to the circle shape. So let's move Emily to here. Matthew maybe here and maybe I'll swap Lucy and Edward. Resize and you know even rotate your whole photo if you need to. And then if you don't like it you can just click the bin to remove the photo completely which will then redo your collage to look to fit four photos. So just click undo if you want to return to how it was before. So I think I'm pretty happy with how this photo collage works so I'm going to click save as and save that document. You can then order it as a print or use it as the base for a scrapbook page. Now of course I can go ahead and print or save that collage and I can even remix it into a different design just by double clicking on the new thumbnail. Now I do especially love this version of the collage. It just looks so cute to have the family up the top and the individual photos below. Of course if you head into advanced mode you can use all of the tools in Photoshop Elements to edit any photos or make any changes you want. But basic mode will do very nicely for this example. If I change my collage again, here I can use a different background graphic from the graphics tab. If you click on the graphics tab, you'll see all of the options that have come built in with Photoshop Elements. So I might want to drag on a different look for the background and it'll just download it. And again, I can always click and drag and resize my photos again and again, however I'd like. And you can always click undo if you want to reverse any changes you've made. There we go. We have a beautiful Facebook cover and you can always add some text. I'm going to select that all. That size is a bit too big and let's resize it even smaller to add a little title for my Facebook collage. And then of course I can save or save as. Then it's saved as a Photoshop Elements project and I can always open it and alter it in the future. So if you've never looked at it before, I really recommend checking out the Create menu. In Photoshop Elements Editor, there are three modes and in the Guided mode, we've got some great new features to show you. Guided edits are like tutorials that walk you through the process of fixing your photo or creating a special effect on your photo. Really love the Restore Old Photo Guided Edit. It's just like a tutorial to help you fix your old photos and the scratches and blemishes too. I especially love Photo Merge Panorama and I use that quite a lot. Let's jump into the new edits starting with the text and border overlay. First select the border that you'd like and you can resize the border to make it closer to the, to the edge. You can also choose a color or leave it white by default. Then you can add your text overlay. After you've finished typing your text, press the green check mark. Then you can choose where on the frame you'd like your text to sit. I think that looks good. Then we can choose a text style. You can click on the different options. I think I like that one. And then click next. 
You always get a couple of options when you finish your guided edit. You can save the file or save as. I always like to save as so I make sure that I am not going to save over my original image and then you can continue editing in quick or in expert mode. Quick mode is a great mode if you just want to do some quick fixes of your photo. For example, I can just do a quick heal of that spot where there was some yellow and I could always do a bit of a fix on the photo to brighten it up a bit. And then in expert mode you can always view the layers and create you can always view the layers and do any other editing you'd like to. So that's the guided text and border overlay. So now to show you another one of the new fun edits in Photoshop Elements guided edit mode. We have the multi photo text edit. I'll start with this cute photo of Lucy again and let's do as demonstrated Lucy. The next step is to choose how you want your text to be and then you just simply say create frames and then it's easy to add your photos from the photo bin or from your computer. I just clicked photo bin and it chose the next four photos for me and I can always replace a photo double click on the photo and then you can always zoom in or move the photo to get it precisely where you'd like it to be. And then you can optionally choose a different background if you would prefer that. But I don't, so let's click undo. We can add a drop shadow and some bevel of varying degrees to make our letters stand out. Click next and once again you can save your file and then continue editing in quick or in expert mode. So after fiddling around in expert mode, here's my final collage and I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I hope this inspires you to have a play with the multi-photo text guided edit. Now I wanted to show you one more guided edit, but before we get on to that, let me just do a little bit of a touch up to this photograph of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. We're just going to grab our spot healing brush and just brush away these two metal poles that are interfering with our view. Now that's much better. So let's go to the guided mode and the partial sketch. We can we have a few different options of what kind of sketch to do. I think I'm going to go with the old paper but we'll see how it looks. I'm just going to drag it over the Sydney Harbour Bridge itself and we'll see how that looks. If I go over any areas I shouldn't have, it's easy to fix. Just hold down Alt or use the Subtract button. You can adjust your brush size and the opacity using these sliders. And there's the detail brush if you want to add a little more detail. You can adjust the edges if you look and see that things have got a bit of a harsh edge. In our case, I think it's looking pretty good. And then before you commit, you can always have a look at the flipped effect. How does it look if everything else looks like a pencil sketch or an old photo? I think I like it this way. So we we'll just click next and then as usual you can save it as a new file and then edit in quick or in expert mode. You can see that this effect has been created by adding a layer with a layer mask. That's the great thing about guided edits. You can often learn new things just by using them. And a little treat for you for sticking it out through this review. Hey girl, did you know there's a meme creator in Photoshop Elements? Well, there is. Click on Guided Edit and then choose the Meme Maker. You start with your open photograph that you want to be the feature of the meme and then click Create Meme Template. Then you click Type Tool to get started. So all you need to do is type and you can then, after you've finished typing, 
your text you can zoom in to highlight part of the photo if you want to or zoom out and make it smaller. You can fit the photo to the whole canvas or choose a new border. I like this one, it's really fun. But to stay true to the meme, I'm going to actually fit the photo to canvas in this stage. And then you can choose an effect for your photo. It could go a bit psychedelic, sketchy, or even black and white. But I'm going to revert it to the original. Click Next and then click Save As. And there we have it. A fun meme. You can share it online or export it for printing. Thanks for staying with me for these tutorials. I hope that you'll have a go playing with the new collage, photo, text or the meme edit. Isn't it great how no matter what kind of editing you're doing in the guided edit you can always go in and do some advanced tweaks if you like or of course you can keep things simple and just go with it. And there's even one more new feature here, the tracking. You can adjust the tracking of your text. This is one of the more requested tools for text and it means that you can adjust the spacing between your letters in Photoshop Elements. Thanks for joining me for this review of Photoshop Elements 2019. From the installation to organizing and editing your photos, there's lots of new features that you'll love. Every year the team is adding more and more features and if you haven't upgraded in the last few versions, you'll love seeing text in a path, text on a path, um, how Photoshop Elements can handle groups, how much the organizer has improved and sped up and of course, don't forget the smart tags and the new auto curate features in the organizer. So which feature is your favorite that you've seen so far? Is there a feature you wish was in Photoshop Elements? Let me know in the comments. So the big question that you're probably wondering, should you upgrade? Do you have Photoshop Elements 13 or older? Yes, you should definitely upgrade. Are you using an old computer that isn't on 64-bit? No, you can't upgrade. <laughs> you need to upgrade your computer. Do you love organizing your photos? Yes, you should upgrade. Because if you love organizing your photos, you will love the performance improvements. Scrolling in the organizer is so much faster. Have you ever been annoyed by lack of groups in Photoshop Elements, you should definitely upgrade. We've had that feature for a couple of versions now, but thought I'd mention it. So basically, if you're using Photoshop Elements 13 and older, definitely upgrade. If you're using 14 or 15, consider it. See if you'd like, if you would benefit from the increased speed and some of the new features I showed today. Thanks so much for joining me. If you'd like to learn more about digital scrapbooking or Photoshop elements, head to digitalscrapbookinghq.com.